wish me luck, eh? Where do I even begin? Okay. Another episode of Asia One Tries. I'm Muna, and this is where we explore local traditions and cultures and find out why Singapore is a melting pot of cultures. As usual, I don't know what my task is, but we are in Gelang Serai, so I assume it's something to do with the Malay culture. Please give me my three hints. Muna, here are the three hints for you, and if you guess the activity correctly, it will help you in the activity challenge later. Cloth, Indonesia origin, vibrant. I want to say it's something performative. Oh, is it Wayang Kulit? No. Some sort of puppetry performance? No. Well, now you have one more try. You're so hard on me today. Uh, oh, uh, um, um, Gamelan. So the activity you'll be trying out today is batik painting. I feel like everything you guys have been throwing at me is a real skill set to have. And batik painting is something I don't think I've ever thought of trying because I know I'm not good with like painting or drawing. I guess I gotta do what I gotta do. Alright, wish me luck. Hello! Hey, hi, hi, hello. Hi, I'm Muna, nice to okay. meet you. Can you share with us a little bit more about your background? My name is Kamal. Mm -hmm. I'm the Kamal of Kamal Arts. This is like a place where I work. I research a lot about batik painting. So this is like somewhat becomes the batik resource centre, the go-to place for people who, who wants to know about batik or batik painting. One of the biggest things I do is community batik and that's something I'm very proud of. Tell me more about community batik. I get this idea from this word gotong royong. Yes. You know, and that's like missing when we live in HDB flat and people don't know their neighbours and things like that. So usually I would stretch a blank cloth and then we start waxing. So when I start waxing, people get curious and we will wonder what am I doing? And yeah. once they gather around, I would just pass them the colour and everybody contribute the colour. And I think it's very uniquely Singapore because in Singapore, we have a lot of these public events. People get together and regardless of race or religion, people just come together and they, they see that they're doing something and we all do together, you know? And a lot of these people who start work on the community batik, they also have no experience? No okay. experience required. Good, I'm asking <laughs> that because I also have to paint batik today, so yes, yes, I'm yes. quite nervous. No worries, no worries. You know the saying is, batik is it's very easy to learn, uh -huh. but very difficult to master. <laughs> so everybody, right. can, everybody can do this. Alright, step by step. We yeah. learn first. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we okay. go? Can you tell me, what is batik? Batik is a traditional textile method for decorating. So batik originate in Indonesia. What is the significant meaning of each design? So if you look at traditional, right? I yeah. mean, the most basic is like parang or the mega mendong. These are traditional design. From this, you can tell a person's background, royalty, or their commoners. In the past, batik is made only using wax, so we, we, that's known as batik tulis. Eventually, they innovated and they used the stamp. But nowadays, when you see batik, generally, it's just machine printed. I hope to learn from you, and I know we're gonna delve into batik painting already. So can you maybe give me a demonstration? Usually, we start off with a design on paper. We call this containment. So, you're creating containment that can hold the colour. And then after you do this on paper, you do the transfer. You just trace lightly. Then we form the box. Usually, we use a wooden stretcher in order to speed things up. This is a disposable cardboard stretcher. Oh, very convenient. Yes. Okay, this is the chanting. The trick is all about the tilting. Okay. Okay. I will put this into the hot wax. See, this is the flow. And when I tilt up, it stops. Right? So I test, I think, okay, I can do this. Then you quickly, you touch and then you move. And then you close the gaps. Okay, make sure the lines all meet. It's not really something that is perfect like computer. Mm -hmm. Art, you know, you just have to accept that the line is very raw yeah. and inconsistent, and that's the beauty actually of the art form. So, there you see, I have finished the waxing. Whoa, okay. I'll give you one okay. for you to try. Okay, okay, it's dripping, yeah, okay. and I like that. It's okay. stopped, yes, okay. Yes. You must touch and move, touch and move, uh, ah, touch and move. 
Okay, remember to breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now you're getting oh. cold already. Oh, so, okay. you're getting cold, it's time for you to yeah. pour out and scoop a new one. Uh, but you have to move a little bit faster because it's a little bit more fluid because it's hot. So something you have to move fast, you have to move slow, depend on what temperature it is. So this is the frustration when you're working with wax because the heat is not consistent. That's the challenge. You ready to colour? <laughs> yes. Okay, touch and the colour will spread. Can you see the colour wow. spreading? Uh, so, okay, let's say I add water on side here, the petal here. All right, water here. I paint to the side. Okay, there you see. It touches the water and it has that kind of toning. Yeah, it Very has pretty, that right? The producers told me that you guessed the activity today wrong. It's punishment. It's red only. You don't have to do this. Okay. Wait, so I have to draw this out with the wax. Yes. Okay, okay. so you know the procedure. Three, okay. two, one, start. This goldfish has a lot of fins. Where do I even begin? Okay. What helps you be more efficient with the waxing? Just go with the flow. It's not perfect, you know? So a lot of people when they do this, they get a little bit disappointed because they're going for perfection. Okay, I'm done with my tracing. I mean, all these other parts, I think it's more like a, a creative choice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> That's the excuse we give. Mr. Kamal, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you think I fed? Uh, well, I should say you got an 8. Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. we got a 2 because of the temperature <laughs> change and some technical difficulty. Yeah. You, you go and get a 10. You got a good feel of things, your hands steady and things like that. You just practice. But it's a lot about discovery and practice. Thank you. That was actually really, really fun. So I want to know, what is the current landscape of batik painting in Singapore? It's quite healthy. And I also see on the fashion scene, uh, a lot of people are promoting batik. Based on your experience, what is the level of interest from the younger generation like? It's quite challenging because batik is a traditional medium. It's different, but I still feel it's more exciting. And when you do get young people who attend your classes or take part in batik painting, what are their reactions like? A lot of them couldn't accept failure. Using bate is basically a reality check and they like, you know, there's no command Z button or something like that. Yeah. So there's no undo button, you know. And so they have to really learn to, to do things. When they come back to the raw practice of really making art with something that is so uncontrollable, mm. uh, that, that is a different experience. And, yeah. and usually they enjoy it. They enjoy that break from their norm. Bate used to be very difficult. When I was learning it, I was trying to be perfect. Yeah. You know? But then when you embrace, we are not perfect, you know. So, just go with the flow. Yeah, yeah you That's enjoy fine. it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. You're Kamal. Welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I was quite nervous, but Mr. Kamal was very patient. And I think I love the idea of what batik stands for because everyone has a batik in their own culture and a use for it. But batik painting itself, it's so therapeutic. Something about painting really just calms you. And because he said, you know, to go with the flow, Forget about being perfect, being right. It's just about embracing everything about what art is, which is the rawest part of it, right? And and once I got into the groove of things, it was very, very enjoyable. I really like painting. It's something that I wouldn't be so afraid to explore. And actually, my painting wasn't so bad, you know? Thanks very much for joining me on this uh, therapeutic journey. Make sure you catch the next episode of Asia One Tries. Bye!